students my name is mrs tanmay raut i am your new teacher for history and political science so students whenever we talk about social science or history or civics your faces go long and there is 12 o'clock on your face like this hmm but the thing is social science is very very interesting children very very interesting only the thing is you need to understand the concepts unless and until you understand the concepts you will not create interest in social science and that is why you'll always feel it boring you'll not feel like studying because there is no such kind of it's not like science see in this chapter we are going to study about the basic difference between science and social science and we are going to move on with the first chapter of history that is historiography development in the west yes yes don't worry i know long word historiography i don't know what it means all right so don't i know there are many many questions in your uh, small little mind so i'll answer all your questions just don't worry sit relax and then i'll take you to the journey of history all right then see children before we move on to the teaching of the first chapter i will tell you the strategy through which we are going to study history and learn history throughout the year now now because of the pandemic scenes this video lectures are going on so as soon as i teach you a video lecture maybe one fourth part of the chapter or one third part of the chapter after the teaching of that video lecture i will give you certain revision questions all right you have to go through the textbook whatever part i have taught that much part you have to go through and you have to find the answers to the revision questions that are given to you all right then later on i will provide you answers of the revision questions which i have already provided to you then after that you have to correct your answers you have to see whether your answers have a match with my answers or not and if there is little bit mistake you can do the correction yourself now big students now 10 standards you all are all right so do the correction by yourself then the next part is talking about the exercise when we finish the whole chapter children then we come to the exercise that is in the uh, uh, end of your lesson end of your chapter exercise questions are there so i will be providing you either the pdf or in any other way i will provide you the answers to all the exercise questions so no need to worry about it you can learn this, those questions and get yourself prepared for each and every lesson as we go on as we move on with the portion all right all right now then let us begin with the first chapter that is historiography development in the west so children now tell me basically what is the difference between science and social science when we talk about all right science you will say miss there are uh, generalized formulas in science like for example like if if we come to science then what method what what method do we use for formulating some laws in science we use very simple we have a physics lab we have a chemistry lab so what we do we do the method of experimental observation we do the experiment we record the observation we do the experiment once again we once again record the observation so because of this what happens children a series of observation takes place all right let's take an example of it so that you can understand it much better now see when we do the method of experimental observation suppose we have to identify the assets and bases so what is the best option litmus paper right so what happens litmus paper test we take for identifying assets and bases we take the test again and again and we record the observations after recording a series of observation we come to a general statement in a series of observation what we see that either the litmus paper is turning red or it is turning blue all right if we take only acids and bases then either the litmus paper is turning red or it is turning blue then what we will come to a general statement that acids after a series of observations we will see that acids make the little litmus paper turn red whereas the bases make the litmus paper turn blue now because of this there will be a formulation of law that whenever we take a litmus paper test with respect to acids and bases if it is acid it will turn the litmus paper red if it is a base it will turn the litmus paper blue so this is a observation this is a law which is true irrespective of place time space 
irrespective of all these things this law is true all right if we take a litmus paper test here in india and if we take a litmus paper test there in america or somewhere in pakistan or iraq or iran or anywhere else in the world the test is going to be the same the result is going to be the same that is that the assets will turn it to red and the basis will turn it to blue all right even today in today's time if we take the litmus paper test in 2020 or if we take it in 2050 still the results are going to be the same that is why children there is a formulation of law with respect to science when we study science a law which is true irrespective of time and space now let us take for example speed this equation that is speed is equal to distance upon time how do we get the formula of speed or how do we calculate speed we take the distance and divide it with the time so speed is equal to distance upon time and this formula again is true irrespective of the time and space so this is how science works but do you think social science also works in the same way of course not when we come to social science children there is no lab method no lab method available for social science and that is why there is no formulation of laws when we talk about social science all right and especially as this is a history class if we come to the subject of history then we will see that there is no such method of experiment and observation rather we will have to interpret the available sources now let me make it very clear what is what do you mean by interpret see children interpreting means taking out the meaning out of something that is interpretation of something all right so interpreting or taking out the meaning or understanding the meaning of a source of history now what is a source what is a source a source is from where we get the information is called the source maybe it is a uh, it is a coin maybe it is a stone inscription maybe it is a monument maybe it is a document that we received maybe it is a letter all right so all these places from wherever we get the information about history it is called as a historical source so when we do history research in history we what we have to do is we have to interpret the available sources and then write about the past events whatever sources are available with us we have to study those sources we have to interpret those sources we have to carry out a research on it and then we have to write about the past event that is we can say that we have to write a historical narrative all right so this is how social science or particularly we will talk about history this is how this is how the historical research works so now children various methods of historical research are there now historical research can't be done using one same thing uh, like in your science there is a physics lab there is a chemistry lab and that that's all in that lab you can do all sorts of research and you are done with your research your science your law and whatever you have to find out you get it in that lab but when we talk about history the thing is not so because in history there are various methods of historical research for example you can find out about history through archaeology now what is archaeology archaeology is the study of material remains now what is this material remains simple children for example we find the material remains of the harappan civilization right and we can make out that the harappan civilization the cities during the harappan culture were organized in very beautiful ways the architecture or the engineering mind of the harappan civilization people was very good and their cities were organized in a very systematic ways so from where did we come to know about all this we came to know about all this through archaeology that is when we studied the material remains of the harappan civilization we came to know about this fact all right then another one is archival science now archival science is what study of archives now what is this archives yeah miss that is very simple that archival science will be study of archives only but then what is archives simple children archives is a place where the historical sources are kept or you can say are stored it is a place where the collection of different historical sources is kept at one place it's stored at one place now in these archives you can find some books you can find some stone inscriptions you can find some documents some newspaper cuttings some letters all right so a place where the historical material is stored is called as archives 
and the study of these archives is called as archival science and what is archival science it is a method of historical research all right next now manuscriptology what is manuscriptology very simple study of manuscripts but what are manuscripts again a long word simple children script means writing manu your manu means manual manuscripts means manual writing all right so wherever there is a manual writing on any place maybe on a pillar maybe on a leaf of a tree all right so these are called as maybe on a cloth maybe on a piece of um, ancient kind of paper so all this wherever you find manually written some information it is called as a manuscript all right then we come to epigraphy what is epigraphy a study of inscriptions now from a long time i have been saying this word inscriptions but what are inscriptions see children whenever in the ancient times people had to write something permanently they used to write it on the rocks now you will say how they used to write miss with a pen no of course not with a pen they used to carve it they used to carve the writing in the rocks maybe the rocks at a particular temple maybe a pillar somewhere or maybe some wall all right maybe in the caves wherever people used to carve out something because they wanted to write the information permanently it is called as inscriptions so in a simple way we can say wherever there is a carving on a rock and something is written in that it is called as an inscription all right then linguistics very simple study of language another method of historical research then numismatics study of coins different people different times in the history there were different different coins and different different currencies and the study of this currency or for that matter we will say coins is called as numismatics then genealogy genealogy is the study of lineage and lineage means nothing but ancestry all right it is the study of the family tree of a particular clan very clear so what are all these things all these methods these are the methods which we can use for historical research depending we don't have to use all these methods at once all right we can use one of the two or two three a combination of two three methods depending on the type of historical research that people are doing so till here we are very clear about the difference between science and social science the way we have to carry out a historical research and the different methods with which we can carry out our historical research all right so now let us move on with the next part look at the title of the chapter what is the title historiography right again long word historiography all right so here children i have made a small difference for you a small difference between history and historiography because i think we might get confused that what is the difference between history and historiography and if i only made you understand the meaning or the definition of historiography then i don't think you'll understand it in the in the way i want you to understand all right so if i make it make you understand by the way of differentiating between the two words then you'll understand it better and you'll remember it for a longer time all right so history we all know very well it is a written account of the past event any past event right maybe indian freedom struggle maybe world war 1 world war 2 or maybe stone age man whatever written account is there whatever written information we have about the stone age man we call it history very clear now coming to historiography historiography is studying the best ways to interpret historical sources and the ways in which a historical narrative is written that means if history is written in one particular way historiography tells you that how you can write that history only in a better way so this is what is historiography very clear it will the historiography you can say that it will tell you how to write history in a better way how to interpret the available sources in a better way very clear so this is the difference between historiography and history now coming forward historian what do you mean by a historian very simple very simple it is very common sensical once we understand history and we understand the meaning of historiography the meaning of historian is crystal clear 
A historian is no one but a person who writes about the past by studying and interpreting different historical sources. For example, if some of you, some of you students have a great interest in history and you want to conduct some historical research, you want to find out that for what happened in the history exactly about this particular place in this particular time, then what will you do? You will extract the available sources, whatever information you have on that particular matter, you will go through all that information and then you will after carry out, carrying out a research, you will write your own account. All right. So this person who will write his own account by studying and interpreting different available sources of history is called as a historian. Very clear? Yeah. Now, talking about sources. From a long time I have been telling you sources are places from where we get the information. Right? So now, in a little bit more detail, I will tell you about the sources. What are the sources of history? So children, there are basically two types of sources of history. For example, one is a primary source and the second one is secondary source. Now what is the difference between the primary source and the secondary source? I'll explain it to you with a very very simple example. Alright, now for example, uh, you have a relative's marriage in your family. But now because of this pandemic, you are unable to visit it. Obviously, because the government is not allowing people, more people to gather in a place. Alright, so you don't attain, attain that marriage function. Alright, so you want to know about the marriage function. You want to know more about what happened there, what all things were there to eat, uh, what all preparations were there, how nicely was the bride dressed, how, uh, how was the bridegroom looking, right? You want to know, you are totally excited to know about that marriage function. So what you will do? Uh, there are two options for you either you can ask for photographs of that marriage right uh, or somebody some other relative who has attended that marriage you can ask him ki kaisi thi re shaadi dulhan kaisi lag rahi thi dulha kaisa lag raha tha khane mein kya kya tha veg tha non veg tha noodles tha pizza tha right so there are two options in front of you either you can ask for photographs or you can ask for a narration narration from whom from the one who has attended that wedding. Now, what do you think which of the source is more reliable? Out of the two, out of the photographs and out of the narration, what your relative is telling you, which is more reliable, which is more authentic? Obviously, the photographs, right? Because the photographs, they are clicked during the marriage was going on, right? During the event was taking place, the photographs were clicked and they are shown to you as it is as it is they are shown all right but if you will ask for a narration from somebody then what will happen he will add his views in that narration and he will tell you which may be true may not be true may be partially true are you all getting my point children if any relative of yours is telling you about the marriage function he will add his views unknowingly into that narration that is why you will not get exact information about the marriage which you will get from the photographs. Very clear? So, the photographs become the primary source. Why primary source? Because they are the first hand information. The first hand information is that information which you get during the occurrence of an event. When an event is happening, when an event is going on and a source comes from that time, that becomes the primary source. For example, photographs. For example, coins if we talk about history. If we get the coins about some, uh, like for example, if you got the coin from the time of Emperor Ashoka, then it will become a primary source because that coins belong to that period when the rule of Ashoka was going on. Very clear. So this is the primary source. The primary source and the secondary source uh, in between both of these, the primary source is a more authentic one, more reliable one. Because it comes to you as it is, without any kind of additions or subtractions. But when we talk about the secondary source, the secondary source is a source which is a source of information which comes to you after the event has happened. Alright, like the narration of the marriage function which your relative is telling you. He is telling you after the event has already been 
already happened it is over now and then he is telling you the narration for example if we talk about movies about films let's talk about bhag milka bhag a beautiful film right but the film was uh, produced or it was released after all the events had already happened all right so there might be some additions or subtractions on the part of the director in that movie story or in the script of the movie so that is why we cannot say that the secondary source is a more reliable one if we compare it to the primary source so here examples are given monuments are primary source then coins are primary source and secondary source examples can be films can be books etc all right till here we are very clear with the content of the chapter now let's move on to the tradition of historiography which is the last part of today's lecture all right i'm not going to stretch it for a long time don't worry it's a small part and i'll finish it within a moment okay so tradition of historiography children in ancient times people did not know about writing there was no language there was no script so that is why how how was that the people of that time of the ancient times will keep a record of this how will they forward it to the coming generations so they had their own ways there was no writing of history no recording of history but they had the method of painting they had the method of painting you know cave paintings and all then they had the method of storytelling then they had the method of composing songs composing ballads and this is how what happened in the from the ancient times till today when language was not there when scripts was not there then through the paintings we came to know about that period then when the language was formed through the paintings whatever the historians came to know they put it in the language form and this is how till today we are well acquainted with the history of the ancient times so from the ancient times till today the technique of uh, recording history the technique of narrating history has been changed earlier paintings then language then written form and then today we are preserving things like if we if there is a excavation somewhere and we get a remain of something uh, maybe a, a a rock a metal or some carving or some um, some idol idol you know murti yes some part of idol what we do we store it like i told you the, the those are stored in the archives yes so this is how the tradition of recording history of narrating his history has been changing from time to time so children this is it we will stop here and for this video i have some revision questions for you which you need to note down so please try and note down the first question the first question is with what objective is historical research carried out i repeat with what objective is historical research carried out first questions these are one to two sentence questions children huh? you don't have to write a long essay okay just one or two sentences you can finish these answers yeah then second question is why is it not possible to use the empirical method in history why is it not possible to use the empirical method in history and what does empirical method means empirical method means this method of experiment and observation all right yeah then let's move to third question okay so now this match the following the third question is match the following so uh, rather than match the following i will just tell you one column and you do the other column so one column i will tell you uh, and you write what what is the matching pair in the other column so first one is study of coins in first column first put letter 1 and write there study of coins and then how you will write the answers you will put a dash and write the answer in front of it all right then second one is study of inscriptions first one is study of coins second one is study of inscriptions third one is study of lineage and fourth one is study of language study of language all right 
yes now you can take a bracket inside the bracket you can write the options for this you can write the four words and then you can match the pairs correctly so take a put a bracket and write this write epigraphy genealogy linguistics numismatics out of these four words now you have to put the correct word in the correct place all right i repeat the four words epigraphy genealogy linguistics and numismatics very clear children now the last and the fourth question of this lecture is that what is historiography and who is called a historian what is historiography and who is called a historian all right so these are the four questions you have to go through your textbook and you have to find the find out the answers of this questions and write it down somewhere all right children have a nice time and keep studying keep learning thank you